While ZFS is amazing at resiliency, provided you set it up properly and put enough drives in your pool, and losing one of those drives generally doesn't mean losing your data in that scenario, that doesn't cover high availability, because what if the motherboard fails? Because that can happen. We know computers sometimes go out, and we can do things like redundant power supplies, but what does redundant motherboards look like when you have a ZFS pool? Well, we're going to talk about it from the perspective of TrueNAS. This question comes up a lot about TrueNAS and high availability, that yes, it can do it, but there is some special hardware that is needed to make this happen. I do have a full video you'll find down below covering one of their M50 servers I take apart to show that specialized hardware. But we're going to talk some of the high level concepts of just how it works because the question comes up of can I build my own TrueNAS HA system? And as of today here in October of 2024, that answer is only if you have that specialized hardware from IAC systems will TrueNAS do HA. Now I know on the roadmap for TrueNAS scale was a scale out architecture gluing it all together with Gluster because it's not something native to ZFS to span systems, but that never really came to fruition because Gluster became defunct. So I'm not sure where the roadmap is for that type of clustered file system. But as far as taking a single pool and making it resilient against failure of a motherboard, yes, that can be done with TrueNAS and their enterprise hardware. And that's what we're going to talk about, just how that works. <music> Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, there's two primary things that enable the high availability to work properly, because I want you to think about how this architecture would work and how they had to solve the engineering issue, essentially. You have two complete motherboards, two complete controllers. How do you get all those controllers to talk to all the drives and know the state of all the files, all the transactions, and the ZFS pool? Well, there's two things you need for that. First is dual ported SAS. You can look that up and dive deeper into the details. There are chassis that have this. This is a feature. It's not something invented at all by the team at IX Systems. This is something they're taking advantage of. And that is a redundancy on the SAS to have two controllers talking to the single drive at the same time. Now, only one controller is ever active, but that dual connection is what allows them to be able to instantly take over because you're not passing the pool between servers. It's just waiting there in standby. But the think, okay, then how do you sync the two? Because this is always the challenge of when you build out any type of clustered file system is how do you sync all the data to create a single storage space between there? And this is why this is a still cost effective and popular way to do it because doing it all in one system gives you that performance. That performance comes from their NVDIMMs for extremely low latency rate caching and a high bandwidth PCIe interconnect between the controllers to synchronize the NVDIMMs. This is very important because what that means is constantly the controller in waiting, the standby controller, is always in sync with the bandwidth available via PCIe. This is where that challenge comes in when you look at clustered file systems of, okay, we want to sync the rights to two locations at once or more. Well, if I'm writing at 25 gigs, I now have to also write at 25 gigs between the systems or faster. And this creates some of those bottlenecks that you see in those. Second reason that this is a popular setup is when you talk about 20 petabytes of capacity with encrypted drives, you see a whole rack of drives. Drives are one of the more expensive parts of building out your array. If you build out a clustered file system, you then means you're going to buy, if we wanted 20 petabytes of capacity, we need at least two to give us the redundancy we're looking for. So now you've increased costs. This is why this is such a popular solution still. And the fact that it fails over immediately because of that high bandwidth PCI interconnect, the moment that it's not in one place, it could be in the other place right away. But 
as you can tell, this is going to require some pretty specialized hardware. Now, one thing worth noting is what about switch failure and how would you build these out? And you would actually put a lag group between them. So you have your lag A and lag B, and you're taking and putting them up across different switches. This way you can suffer a switch failure and still have the groups working together. Uh, we just recently did a deployment. This is exactly how we set it up in a data center with one of these systems. Now, TrueNAS Enterprise doesn't look much different than the standard TrueNAS that you download. The couple differences are going to be, obviously, when you're using IX Systems hardware, you can view the enclosures, but also you notice that there are two controllers showing up and the ability to initiate a failover, or at the top, there's the ability to disable HA. Whenever you're changing network settings, you do have to disable HA, but other than that, you generally leave it enabled. You can modify shares and create data sets, no problem. It's doing it at the pool level, so there's not any need to do any special changes. And as noted, everything is synced immediately between the two devices. Now, the one other thing missing is the apps, and this is something I've commented before, that once it comes to the enterprise or data center usage, such as this example, we don't really put apps on the storage server. Those are run separately. This particular server is a storage target for an XCPNG system, and that is where all the applications run for this particular client. So there's not any need to have the apps on there when it comes to the core function of it just being NAS, and that's why the button is missing. It's not even installed on there. It slims it down quite a bit. But I love hearing from all of you. Leave your thoughts and comments on this down below, or if you want to have a more in-depth discussion on this, my forums are a great place for that. Love to see you come and join and be part of that, and I do interact quite a bit with people there. Also, like and subscribe, and head over to lawrencesystems.com where I have a newsletter, and also you can hit me up on any of the socials that are available there. Love hearing from all of you. Thanks. Thanks to our sponsors for their continued support.